What is going on? Welcome to the Course I Talk with Eric. My name is Eric Wilson, and today I will be talking about the top five, the best, the cream of the crop in this year's 2021 NBA draft. Let's get to it. Now, my number five might be a hot take, but coming in at number five, I have Jalen Green, who just came from the NBA G League at night. He averaged around 18 points, four rebounds, and three assists. He's currently ranked number one in his position. Uh, by ESPN he had a really rough start to the season you know playing with professionals and you're coming straight out of high school but he really picked it up for the ignite and he he plays very very well let's talk about some strengths um he's a very dynamic scorer he's a great rebounder for his size um an athletic and aggressive finisher at the rim and he's a tough defender who wants to defend others when the team's best player um, a negative that he has, he's known for only his scoring ability and is not um, known for his defensive game at all. Um, in my eyes, I don't see him as a great on-ball defender uh, going into the league. But, you know, the more um, the league continues to grow, we're seeing less defense and, and less defense and more offense. So, I mean, that might possibly be a positive for NBA teams going in. So, um, hopefully he can gain some decent uh, defensive game, you know, before entering the league. And he's also pretty skinny for his size. You know, he's six foot five, and he's uh, around 180, 178. Um, a comparison I have for Jalen Green is probably just an um, athletic scoring um, combo guard. You know, if I'm going all the way back, I can see him like an Eddie Jones type of player. Um, hopefully he can just improve on both sides of the ball. But, you know, I really used to have Jalen Brown in my top three. Uh, but, you know, I kind of see him as a one dimensional scorer. You know, a one dimensional player. You know, hopefully um, he, he looks like he probably has a drive to. Um, improve his defensive side of the game but I really just see him as that score but he's definitely going to be a great player in this league coming in at number four I have his teammate in this year's NBA G League um, series you know whatever you like to call it and that's Jonathan Kaminga the small forward from the NBA uh, G League at night he averaged around 16 points seven rebounds and three assists he's around six foot six 210 pounds and uh, I used to have Jonathan Kaminga around the number two of my big board. You know, my first big board, I had him around number two. Uh, but, you know, I, after, you know, some more playing and more watching um, some of the college players, I, I feel like, you know, he he's he's almost there. You know, um, he his stock has really risen um, from the past couple of months, you know, due to him playing in the NBA G League and being such a great two way player. You know, that's one big thing I really like about his game. He's a really good two way player. Um, let's look at some of his strengths and weakness. He's a great defensive player. He can drive and rebound efficiently. And he's a great rebounder at his position. He averaged around um, seven per game. And he's a great athlete. Some negatives, um, his shock selection could be worked on. You know, he's not that great of a shooter from downtown. And uh, maybe a little bit development in his ball handling skills. And uh, this <laughs> comparison might be a reach. But maybe even um, he could probably be an all-star, two-way wing uh, player. And uh, he could maybe become a Jalen Brownish player, you know, especially if he improves that jump shot. But I could I could definitely see him being a great two-way player um, in this league. You know, in the league where we're, we are seeing the less amount of two-way players and we're seeing uh, less two-way players at all. You know, it'll, it'll be great to see um, how he, you know, pans out in this league. Now, coming in at number three, I have um, a guy who I am very high of, and he's probably my second favorite player on this um, in this 2021 draft, and that is Jalen Suggs, the man who hit a 40 uh, foot three to win versus UCLA 93 and 90, and the final four. Um, they eventually lost to the Baylor Bears in the final but this kid can ball he averaged around 14 points five rebounds and five assists um, very great player you know he wrapped up all the awards he was NCAA all tourney consistent all-american uh, 2021 all WCC uh, 2021 all WC tourney you know you could you can <laughs> you could really um, 
go all day with all the awards that he really ranked up this this year. You know, he's ranked around fourth in his position, ranked second overall by ESPN, and uh, he is just a point guard. You know, he's around six foot, six foot four, two hundred and five pounds. Um, he's a great point guard for that. Um, formerly undefeated team um, for Gonzaga. He's very consistent and he can help his team um, lead to the uh, Final Four. I, I feel like he can lead an NBA team in this today's NBA. So let's talk about some strengths and weaknesses. He's a very athletic player. He was a two-sport athlete, had a big scholarship football offers in high school, but he eventually chose basketball. He's a great scorer. He shot around 50% from the field. Decent playmaker and facilitator. Good pick and roll. Uh, passer. Tough defender. And he's also a great rebounder for his size and position. Some negatives. He uh, shot a little a little bad from the three and definitely could be worked on in this NBA. We shot around 33%. And he did get injured um, earlier in the season, which does bring to your mind, could that possibly be a problem for some NBA teams or will they even bring that up in the uh, draft conversation? But a comparison, you know, might be a little bit, um, many might not like it, but, you know, a comparison I have for him is I see a little Jason Kidd. You know, I see a Jason Kidd. He's a great two-way player. You know, he plays great on both sides of the ball and he could eventually be a evolving uh, to a franchise point guard. You know, I'm very high on him. He's one of my second favorite uh, players. Now, the next guy, it was a push and pull. You know, I didn't know. You know, I had a little bias towards Jalen Suggs, but, you know, I eventually threw out the bias for this next guy. But I definitely feel like Jalen Suggs can be a great franchise point guard in the NBA. Now, the next guy, after a lot of analysts and a, and a lot of um, – just me looking at his highlights and just looking at, you know, deeper analyzing the stuff that he does. It's Evan Mobley. You know, he is a potentially a, unip a unicorn type of player um, in this NBA draft. You know, he averaged around 17 points, nine rebounds and uh, two assists, but also three blocks, you know, and he's he's a total package. You know, just while I was talking about Kaminga being a great two-way packer, two two-way player, he's a great two-way player. You know, um, I once said he was. Um, I once, when I first um, released my big my big board, I had him number five. You know, I, I did say he could be a number one in any other draft, but this one is stacked. You know, no, he's around number two. Arguably, he could probably be number one. You know, but he's a great talent that would make any team happy. Um, and he, he's let's just look at some strengths and weaknesses. Um, he's a great rebounder for his size. He is six foot tall, 215 pounds. You know, he's an outstanding scorer. Score, he's shot up, shooting around uh, 58 last time I checked from the field. Um, impressive post defender, um, averaged around three blocks per game. Like I said, he can handle the ball like a guard. Potential um, of phenomenal length and size, and a decent decent player you know i really like his game you know you know it's something special when you see a seven foot guy who can probably block everybody on the court shot dribbling and leading the offense you know if you can get that type of player in this nba draft you got to take him you definitely got to trade some negatives um he's a little skinny he's around 215 um pretty pretty skinny on a on a seven footer um definitely just needs to gain a little bit of weight but um, a comparison I have for him is a comparison I've always seen, and that is a Chris Bosh type of player. You know how Chris Bosh was one of the was one of the best players, you know, two way players, uh, while in his career. Um, I'm looking up now. I think Chris Bosh is also a six footer. Well, six eleven, six eleven. It's, it's around the same size, but you know, definitely great player. Um, definitely going to make any team happy. And um, but this next guy, <laughs> this next guy, I think everybody knows knows who's going number one um, when this draft goes on. But definitely uh, Evan Mobley is a great player. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls coming in at number one, I have Mr. K Cunningham himself. The man is six foot eight, 220, um, averaged around 20 points. Seven rebounds and four assists at his season at Oklahoma State University. 
Um, he's ranked number one in his position, ranked number one by ESPN, ranked number one in this list. And there should be no thought in anyone's mind that Mr. K. Cunningham is the best undeniably player to pick in this draft. He has the potential to become a transcendental number one pick. Now let's talk about some strengths and weaknesses so I can get into the meat and potatoes. He is the build, the new build for NBA players, that being that tall point guard like guys like Luka Dantich or um, even guys like LeBron James. Now he has a high offensive basketball IQ which contributes him to making great passes. He's a great scorer. When he's efficient, he can let the ball fly from three. He shot around 42% from downtown. He's a great rebounder for his position, averaged around seven. Great leadership even for a freshman as he led that Oklahoma State uh, team to what people didn't think they were gonna be without him. Um, He's elite at the pick and roll offense. He can be a part of the new positionless basketball, and he's an all-around best pick for the NBA draft. Now, a couple of negatives. He's defense. He's decent on the defensive side of the ball, not the best um, defensively. Um, he's not as athletic as he should be. Definitely not as athletic as he should be. And he, um, there's not really a lot of negatives that I see of Mr. K. Cutting in, but you know, a comparison, a big comparison that I have always seen is another guy. And that is Grant Hill. You know, I see a lot of Grant Hill in his game. Um, Ian, we could possibly, you know, them both being the same height and them both having the same type of play. And uh, he can also, you know, I, I said this a while ago. I said he could possibly be a small Ben Simmons with a better IQ and a better shot. But that is very possible. He can definitely be a smaller Ben Simmons with a better IQ and a better shot and a better IQ and a better IQ um, as Ben Simmons. I don't know what he's doing. But, you know, he's a great player. And I, I really have a lot of respect for Kate Cunningham. And uh, we can definitely... I see no thought in my mind. We are seeing, we're going to see Grant Hill, hopefully without the injuries. You know, knock on wood, hopefully without the injuries. But Grant Hill, number two in Detroit. Well, that is all, folks. Thank you guys for listening. If you're listening to the end, go ahead and follow all of my social medias and uh, subscribe and like. And thank you for listening. And remember, of course, I talk with Eric doing sports the 757 way. Have a great day.